My guest today is an overcomer. She's battled with a giant and come out victorious. Peggy Rupel is a dear friend of mine whose strength and courage I've had the privilege of witnessing firsthand. In her 32-year battle with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, she was never a victim. The grace and strength with which she walked through this journey has only been a platform for her to minister and glorify God. She is a light, and I'm honored to call her my friend. Stay with us. We're back with Dan and Peggy Rupel, and I'm so glad you guys are here today. Yes. And you know, in the last episode, we talked a lot about Master Media and all the wonderful work you're doing in the film and television industry. But today, you know, Peggy, I want to talk about how that after 15 or 16 years, mm -hmm. here you are in the midst of this exploding, mm -hmm. wonderful ministry and influence, and then you're hit with, I believe it's the sixth diagnosis yes. after a long pause yes. of cancer. Yes. Was it non-Hodgkin's? Lymphoma. Lymphoma. Yes. I mean, that had to be like, bam, a, a ton of bricks, shock. Yes. What, and, and what happened? And truly surreal to even say, mm -hmm. a 32 year cancer battle, mm -hmm. six bouts. And, um, and I did think well, possibly it was behind me. And what happens is all of a sudden you realize that, oh God is sequestering me again. Mm. Uh, uh, life gets small. Yeah. Um, you have to tend to these things. Um, wow. But as he's proven to me time and time again, everyone has, every bout I have has a story um, that he's going to be faithfully usher me through it. Mm -hmm. He can be trusted. I may not know my future, but I certainly know the one who holds it. Yes. And then you draw and press into that because you find in that place this, em this embrace uh, of your soul where God meets you. Um, where the intersection of suffering and also of joy, that they really do coexist together. Mm -hmm. And by that, I want to say this is, this is not an easy thing to get ever. Wow. In fact, when I first got it and my life expectancy was given five years, now oh. God was telling me an another story with my life, mm -hmm. but you have to contend with that. And I even had doctors, because it took three years to find, say how unfortunate that was to me for my options with my life expectancy and and you have to navigate that lament a little bit like Martha sure. with Lazarus yeah. who said Lord if you only would have been here mm -hmm. but truly did that did Lazarus death that wasn't mm -hmm. what God was doing at the time mm -hmm. and that was God is in charge of this diagnosis yeah. this answers to him mm -hmm. so to be able to go back to that place again and remind myself mm -hmm. of who he says I am Mm -hmm. um, and to be able to be open-handed with my tomorrows mm -hmm. and trust him for it. Yeah. Um, that's, that was always, that's always the challenge. And that's yeah. always the holy place that Absolutely. God finds you in. And it is desperate. Um, yeah. But I find desperate places um, that God is very, very present. And he was yeah. waiting for me in the dark. Yeah. And he had things to speak to me about who he is. Mm -hmm. And so all those things were taking mm -hmm. place. And don't you think that it, 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 without the lament... If we don't go there, if mm -hmm. we just try to stay Pollyanna perfect and I'm fine, I'm fine, we're not allowing the yes. presence of the Lord to, you know, the, the Shekinah glory is actually described as the, like the female part of God, the mothering part of God mm -hmm. that comes in and lies with us in our dust, yes. in our grief. Yes. And it's in those moments really that there's depth and there's beauty yes. Yes. that we would not have discovered in any other way. Exactly. And I, in the same way, I remember telling the Lord, you know, I, I, I'm kind of groping for, you know, way back in the day, kind of groping for what the next thing was. I want to walk in cadence with you. Right. And I hear that the scripture from the Lord is that, you know, this life is like seeing through a dark glass or a dim mirror. Yeah. And only for now, for a moment, that this is, the, this is what it is and this mm. is what we know. But that one day we will know as we are known. Yeah. So that I can, and, he, and I felt like he was asking me to entrust myself into his hands, to not m misinterpret what he was doing by what little I saw. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, at 17 years old, I gave him the pen to my story. That's right. when I came to Christ. I love that. And, and we're storytellers, and we yeah. love nurturing storytellers. And really, when you think about it, the best stories are fraught with all sorts of peril and mm -hmm. danger, mm -hmm. right? 
And um, what those do, those times of stretching, really brings out the best in the character that makes for these epic stories. Yeah. And our God is an epic storyteller, and he wants to be glorified. Yes. And so we can trust him with our tomorrows, even though we can't see what they are. And you mm. have to really weigh what you're hearing from the doctors, and I love my doctors, but there's a wisdom above it. There you go. And so you to be able to trust yes. that um, he is the author and finisher of mm. my faith. Mm -hmm. and I can trust him with, yeah, with what I have. You had to navigate the diagnosis, the things that you were being now being told mm -hmm. after all those years uh, mm -hmm. of having victory uh, and overcoming mm -hmm. the hardships of cancer. I mean, this is this was hard on your body, the, the yes. things that, you know, the protocol that, that yes. had followed. I mean, how did you navigate all that and stay in a place of total trust and faith that you would come through this? Well, um, like Jesus... Um, yeah. When he said, I wish this cup could pass from me. Mm. Nevertheless, not my will be done, but your will be done, God. You have to do the same. He is our example. And the scriptures say that he said, for the joy set before him, he endured this cross, even though he despised the shame. And I had to endure chemotherapy, yeah. the most severe I've ever had. And, it, and it's despicable, and you do despise yeah. it. But there's always something on the other end mm. we can, that, that God is doing and to be able to be present in that. And, you know, you, you just rest mm. in that place. There's a place of actually rest there yes. when you're struggling with um, your tomorrows. Yeah. And because, you, you know, God is the author mm -hmm. and he'll, he, will, he will put into place <laughs> places of encouragement. Um, yeah. And there were times where this suffering was... Um, quite a challenge and one time in particular what was in my spine mm. and uh and i they i had to stay really still they didn't want me to cough choke they want i had to lay still at such time there was the radiation oncologist that was saying um it's going to take me a couple of weeks my oncologist is arguing with him saying she doesn't have a couple of weeks because the tumor was pressing in on my spine if it oh. went in there went to the brain and it's really very sh short amount of time that you have and so I was sat on the couch just quietly before the Lord. I said, God, I need to hear from you. Mm -hmm. I need not just the Logos word. I need the rhema word of God. Can you speak to me? Because it's such an anxious place. And I did what I don't normally do, but really Russian roulette. I opened up the scriptures and here it was, Job 38. Wow. And in Job 38, this is where God finally speaks. He's quiet for a while. He finally mm -hmm. speaks. And he talks about that um, I am the one who set boundaries on the ocean. Wow. I'm the one who said, here's, I put bolts and here is where you stay. And here is where your proud waves halt. I am the one who sets the boundaries. And as soon as I read that, I knew this was a word of the Lord for me. And there was a place of rest for me that um, even though I know I had to be careful and stuff, and I told my doctors, take as long as it needs. Yeah. God has answered this. He has set boundaries on this. So mm. over and over and over, you have these holy moments yes. where you're absolutely desperate. But what does scripture say? He is a very present help yes, in he time is. of trouble. And he manifests himself, mm. and he brings uh, that comfort yeah. to you. And, you know, I'm, I'm still a little bit underweight, and I'm still yeah. growing out my hair right. even as we speak. But mm. that God would allow me to be here to tell yes. you and your audience uh, what a yeah. faithful God we have. Yeah. And, um, and it, is, it is worth it because he is so near mm -hmm. and so present mm -hmm. in these moments. He is so near and so present. And in this moment, I feel him here today. Mm -hmm. And I, I always feel him when I'm with you. Uh, you're the kind of friend that we can meet for coffee. We can walk in the park. We, yes. we just... Uh, deep calls unto deep, and yes. uh, you draw things out of me. God has anointed you mm. in such a way that I believe he's entrusted you mm. with this journey, Peggy. Mm. And I'm, I'm fighting back my tears yes. as I say that because I know that it was a hard journey. Yes. Yes. And, you know, uh, tell us what's on the other side. You, you mentioned how that there's always something on the other side. Where's the reward? What is it that you see? that God has done and is still doing as you move forward in the rebuilding of mm -hmm. your immune system yes, yes. and the, the regrowth of your hair. Yes. And you're, you're looking so beautiful <laughs> here today. You're always beautiful. Well, thank but, you. but what's on the other side? Well, if you think <clears throat> about being the clay yeah. and on that potter's wheel, you know, you, um, 
we have God who says, will you, will you be willing to step there and be submit to what this process is? And I know God, he picks up, he picks up this crude implement cancer that even he hates, mm -hmm. but then he applies that pressure, which mm -hmm. expands your capacity, mm -hmm. right? To know him, to know his grace, yeah. to know his mercy, to know his word, your identity, you have to present all those things mm -hmm. to be true. And then what happens is then he fills you, mm -hmm. right? And his first is always intimate first with God, you and him. But then he takes you and then he pours you out here yeah. and there and here and there. There's no greater joy than I get to speak with other cancer patients. Um, God, as God would have it, he did it in a miraculous way. It's a whole long story, but mm. um, not on my purview. And yet I became a chaplain at a hospital yes. for a year and a half. And I actually get to walk in those rooms. I really had to learn to listen to the voice of God. I only have so many minutes with these people. Right. And God, you can untie the knots quicker than I could. I've got stories to tell. Yes, I can talk of your faithfulness. But can you, and I asked, I said, Lord, can you give me an on-ramp? Mm. Show me an on-ramp. And he was always faithful. I'd see, there it is, and then I can speak into it. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't have a white jacket on. I didn't have a stethoscope. Mm -hmm. So when they looked at me, it's like, who are you, a dietitian? Who are you? And I'd right. say, well, I was a chaplain. Sometimes the walls went up. But as a can then I would say, as a cancer patient, I remember what it was mm -hmm. like to be in that bed, uh. and walls would go down. So there's an authority God gives you because yes. no one goes through something like this, mm -hmm. a believer, um, because the enemy wants to steal your joy. And, and I don't mean the Pollyanna joy, like everything's okay. I mean the joy that's I anchored into yeah. you know who you are in yeah, him. Your strength. That is, that's mm -hmm. right. It's, it's rock, that bedrock mm -hmm. of who I am in him. And, um, and the, enemy, the Lord really told me early on that the enemy was not after my life. He was after my joy. Because oh. if he could steal that, he could undermine this redemptive story that God was going to tell. I didn't realize how often that was going to wow. be told, but I have told the Lord, and I mean it. If this is the note he could be heard loudest in my life, just play it big, mm -hmm. play it loud. And, um, and I mm -hmm. found him faithful every time. Wow. And Dan, you know this woman to be a woman of joy and encouragement and yeah. someone who's, uh, I mean, it, it, all that I've known of her is, is to yeah. always show such strength and grace and mm -hmm. wisdom in every situation. Right. I mean, to the point that I almost feel bad about how I don't do that always. Oh. <laughs> and it, it inspires me yeah. to want to be more like Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, when I watch the Christ likeness in Peggy, and I, I know we only have a couple more minutes in this particular segment, but I want you to start with telling us how that, in, in the next minute, how that hit you and impacted you at this season of your life when you got that news. Well, this season it was totally different than the other five previous bouts because um, we've, we saw a long history of God's faithfulness. Mm -hmm. So when we were given that news, it did rock our world. We were just blindsided by it. But immediately I went up into our bedroom and I asked the Lord, I mm. know no matter what you bring in our lives, wow. you've got good purposes. There's good purposes behind it. Yeah. And so I said, God, don't let us miss your good purposes. Yeah. And the Lord said in the first bouts, your kids saw my glory. Wow. In this bout, your grandkids mm. will see my glory. Yeah. Wow. And wow, wow. I ran down the stairs and said, Bill Beg, I said, God's mm. told me his purpose in this. Amen. And both of us just, we're all in. Yeah. Whatever Amen. we have to walk mm. through, if the our grandkids, grandkids we have seven yeah. grandkids, <laughs> will see my God's, God's oh, glory. Incredible. It's worth it. Incredible. Okay, hold that thought. We're going to go there again. Don't go away. We'll be right back. We're back with Dan and Peggy Rupel. I'm so glad that you're here today. This is an amazing story. And Dan, you mentioned before we left that there was an earlier season. I mean, this, is, this was the sixth time that, that Peggy had a diagnosis with a long gap in between. How is it different this time than how you've had to face it in the past? Right. Well, the first time in 1991, I think I was just in shock. Mm. You know, it's suddenly you know, we have three little kids at that time. And we'd been married, what, about 12, 13 years. And it's like, what's going on? You know, is, is, am I going to be a single dad, Yeah. you know, uh, this early in the game? And so I was a little bit stunned. It was the second bout that was more impactful. Um, because by it coming back a couple of years later, it's like, okay, you're in for a lifetime of this mm. journey, you know, that it, it came wow. back. And I remember one time, I was working at CBS at the time, 
supervising the Price is Right, and Peggy was at the hospital at UCLA. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I would do is between shows on the Price is Right, I'd drive over to UCLA and, and visit with her and, and get back. And I remember one time I stopped at a light at Wilshire and Santa Monica, and I just broke down before the Lord. And I, just, I was just crying out, and I said, Lord, I'm out of words. Yeah. I have nothing else to say. And the Lord was so gracious, he immediately, like in an instant, all the people at our church, our family, friends, that said, we're praying for you, they just kind of went before my eyes. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, you don't have to say anything. Mm -hmm. I hear the prayers of my people. Wow. Yeah. And I'll tell you, Brenda, what that did is for both Peggy and me, throughout our lives, we don't take, when somebody comes up and says, I'm praying for you, yeah. we don't take that lightly. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, because even if they didn't get in their prayer closet or yeah. whatever, but just the fact that God put us on their yeah. hearts and minds, that they, they reached out to God and said, touch them. Mm -hmm. You know, that means so much. And that's where the body of Christ shines because Amen. they step Amen. in the gap yes. when you're weak. Not only is Christ strong, mm -hmm. but the body of Christ can be strong. And Brenda, you Amen. have been that for me. Mm. You have been one of that community of faith, those, those witnesses that stood around and just blessed what God was doing over me and stood and did battle for mm. me against the enemy because he wants to steal, rob, and destroy, right? Yes. And you guys stood there, and I felt that. Yeah. It was tangible. In mm. fact, in one incident, I have, we have a friend, a dear friend, that we would normally mm. always tell and how she did not get on the email list. It's an anathema. Wow. But... But, it, but it's God. Huh. So she, out of nowhere, uh, does not know I have cancer, uh, lives in another state, uh, sends us an email and says, I had a dream last night about Peggy. And as oh. I dreamt, she was jumping over hurdles. And she was doing wow. very well, and all of a sudden, she was really struggling to get over hurdles, and then heavens opened up. Mm -hmm. And they sang that song. I don't know if you heard about same God. And it says... I'm calling on the God of Moses or calling on the God of Jacob. Yes. And, just, and it's calling on the God of David, um, mm -hmm. who made a servant boy courageous. You know, so this is a beautiful thing. And as they were singing, yeah. I began to get, go do more and more and more. And she said, she says, and, she said, and then Jesus mm -hmm. chimed in and said, I'm calling on the God of Peggy. And, um, wow. and she's immediately woke up weeping. She didn't know what it was, so she was writing us to tell us. Mm. I don't, God just said to tell you this, yeah. and you'll know what it means. Wow. Well, as God would have it, because he orchestrated this. Yes, he did. It was at my weakest time. The, oh. the, 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 it was so debilitating, this, this, and I had to be hospitalized mm. for two of my chemos. So that's how debil and it was at that exact mm. moment, moment, how God uses his people. Yes. To be able to be him, mm -hmm. body and flesh, and just right there, tangible mm -hmm. with you. So I thank you, and I thank all my friends and, yeah. and all those. I mean, that is no small thing. I used to say it's like holding a piggy bank, and anytime somebody says you're praying for oh. you, you just feel like <laughs> yeah. you're this tink, 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 tink. <laughs> and that someone is bringing oh, my so name good. before the throne of God. Yeah, amen. It's humbling. Amen. It is humbling. And I think it, it really puts into perspective how important it is that we remain in a place of community and yes. be relational. Yes. We were made to be relational. Yes. The Godhead is relational, the Father mm -hmm. and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And if we look to them and their honor for one another, we see how we were made in His image and, and that's how we're to be yes. relating with them and with one another. Yes. And for some people, I think from the fall of man, really, we've, we've been fragmented even from ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so this journey, yes. Peggy, is one that, you know, it takes those hardships to be able to find, to discover the beauty of who we are. Yes. And to go to those, take that inward journey, so to speak, with Jesus and be brave enough to open that door yes. and say, okay, I'm going to look here where I've never, I've never dared to look before. I've yes. been afraid but I'm going to discover something rich yes. here and only yes. here that God will use this circumstance because his grace, and that, yeah. that's why his grace is sufficient it's for sufficient. us, right? That's right. His grace is what takes what the enemy means for harm. Yes. 
And his and power is made perfect. It. Yes. And, and our weakness. That yes. scripture is so powerful. So good. And you know, it's and also to not be afraid. It's sometimes people are so thrown by suffering. Right. As if something right. was wrong, as if that and, and they've got to yeah. go back and they gotta really read their scriptures and yeah. see where, where God is at. And I, I remember, I think it was Graham Cook that said that God allows mm -hmm. in his wisdom mm -hmm. what he could easily prevent by his power. Wow. We do not have an impotent God. That's really he good. He knows what he yeah. is doing. Yes, he does. And he has a purpose mm. and a plan and a story to tell. Mm. And, um, and we can just stand back and be in awe yeah. of it. Yeah. And surrender. That's a place of surrendering. Yes, it is. Surrendering and realizing being desperate is not a bad mm. thing. Because yeah. we're just, we just call on God, and, and, he, and he's there. Yeah. You know, this, this journey was the first one we've had during social media. Mm, yeah. And as God mm. was doing victory after victory, where mm -hmm. she got this, I won't get into the whole thing, but this two-cycle miracle that we asked people to pray for and other different healings and, uh -huh. and go, everything going in the, in the right direction, I was hesitant to post it on Facebook and Instagram yeah, sure. and those sort of things. And yeah. the reason is, Brenda, is I know a lot of other people, their story is different. Right. It doesn't yeah. end well. Mm -hmm. And we would get calls of mm -hmm. people that we know later passed away. And I was so hesitant because I didn't want anyone to, uh, to, you know, I didn't want to put it in a place where Satan would cause, mm -hmm. lie to them mm -hmm. that God won't heal you because right. he loves Dan and Peggy more. Exactly. Uh, Peggy and Dan serve the Lord more, so mm -hmm. therefore they get the goodies and, and mm -hmm. I don't. Um, but I wanted, I wanted people to know when I posted that there's nothing we can do mm -hmm. that would make God love us more. Mm -hmm. Yes. There's nothing yes. we, we can not do Mm -hmm. that will make God love us any less. Mm -hmm. He loves us, and his thoughts are, are through, you know, to us mm -hmm. for good all the time. But we also have to realize if your story goes differently, yeah. that doesn't mean that he doesn't love you or he's mm -hmm. not involved or, he, or you did something wrong. It means that God has a different story for you. Right. Yes. And yes. he's going to work it out mm -hmm. according to his, his plans. Great. There's a great three words in the book of Daniel. The Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego mm -hmm. go before Nazareth or Nebuchadnezzar. Ne Nebuchadnezzar says, "You got to worship me. If not, I'm gonna throw you in the fiery furnace." And they say, "God will deliver us from the furnace. Mm -hmm. He'll deliver us. You know, we, we're not afraid. We're not gonna bow down to you." But then, three words. They said, "But if not, mm -hmm. right?" Then they said, "We will still praise There's God." There's the commitment. We will. We still, still will God. not bow down to you. Mm -hmm. We'll still pray Him, even though we burn. <laughs> you know, yes. our God is yes. still Amen. on the throne. And we told the Lord, Amen. too, if this is now <clears throat> the servant God uses to bring yes. me to heaven, right. his will be done. Yeah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm. And that's a hard thing to roll off your tongue it is. when you've got grandbabies yes. and you've got all these things to live yeah. for. But we have to remember this is temporal. That's right. We think that, oh, to have 100 right. years or whatever, but it's like... It is, it mm. is finite, mm -hmm. and w at any time, mm -hmm. we could be called home. Yes. And, and that's one good, the gift of cancer mm -hmm. in our relationship mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. it has made us more intentional because yeah. mm -hmm. we don't take tomorrow for granted. That's a yeah. good way to live, and you may think that's a hard tension to be under because you don't know your life is going to be called up. Right. But, but it actually has mm. the fruit of that yeah. is that we are more in mm -hmm. for the kingdom. Yeah. We want to invest and, in things that are eternal and yeah. not so much temporal exactly and yeah i feel like there's somebody watching today i, I really do that's walking through this mm -hmm. and they're walking through it alone they don't yeah. have a community they don't have a supportive family and they they don't really know what to do and they don't know the concept of finding joy in the midst of this mm -hmm. is foreign yes um would you take a minute to one of you, whoever feels led to minister to this person that is struggling with being alone and yes. feeling the despair of no hope. Well, I think what I'd probably tell them is that tell what the we don't realize, you may not realize, is that in God's word, it describes Jesus as we don't have a high priest, someone who, who goes as the intermediator between God and man, who has not, not, we don't have a high priest who's not suffered. And then, but he has 
walk through what we have and yet without sin. He says, let us therefore. He can sympathize with our weaknesses. Let us therefore draw near to the throne of grace that we might see mercy and grace in our time of need. So we have a God who relates to us, who knows what it's like to feel pain, suffering, to feel alone. And yet here he is. He is in heaven. And it says that he sits at the right hand of God. And his job, really, going forward is to intercede on our behalf, telling the Father about our, his, the, reminding him of the love and the, them sharing that together. And the Holy Spirit has his job as an advocate and wooing us to him. So you are not alone. Your God knows what you're going through. He sees you. And first and foremost, you are valued and loved by him. I told the Lord that you don't have to, when I first was diagnosed, that the scripture that I came to know the Lord with at 17 was that God demonstrated his love for me and that while I was yet sinner, that's when he died for me. At my worst, he found me, found me valuable. Sometimes we think we have to clean up and be perfect that we accept that. But God loves us exactly where we're at, Amen. broken. And that's what he came here for, and that's what mm -hmm. he values. And his blood covers us in such a way. He brings mm -hmm. with it hope, grace, mercy, yes. and healing brings healing. Yes. So just rest and trust in mm. him. Amen. Thank you so much for encouraging. Um, you know, you spoke about in, in, in the last episode about drinking from the king's cup, but this is a different cup. Yes. And as followers of Christ, we are asked sometimes to drink from that cup of suffering and yeah. take up our cross and follow him. But there is a reward. Mm. And I thank you for being here with us today to just share from your hearts, from your experiences. And we love you very much. Love we you. love you. Thank you, thank you. What a thank gift. you. <laughs> and to you, friends, thank you for joining us. I know that you were ministered to today. And if you're walking alone, we encourage you to go to the one who has suffered, the one who did give out. He poured out his life for you so that you could be filled with everything that you need and discover who you are in the person of Jesus Christ. Thanks for being with us. Join us again next time. I'm Brenda Crouch.